The previous examples in this section were about determining whether or not two random variables were independent. In this example, we're going to assume that random variables are independent and then calculate some quantities associated with those independent random variables. So here's the example. Let x1 have an exponential distribution with rate parameter lambda 1 and let x2 also be exponential with rate parameter lambda 2 and those random variables are independent. If that's the case, find the probability density function of the new random variable x which is the minimum of x1 and x2 and then also find the probability that x1 is less than x2. So for part A, I'm going to use the CDF technique. Let's say we want the CDF of the random variable x, which is this minimum. Well, by definition, that minimum is the probability that the random variable x is less than or equal to little x. And now what you can do is you can take this capital X and replace it by the minimum. So this is the probability that the minimum of x1 and x2 is less than or equal to little x. Now it turns out this is kind of difficult to work with and in a minute you'll see why I'm going to replace this with the complementary probability. This is 1 minus the probability that the minimum of x1 and x2 is greater than x. I'm going to show you with a number line up here why that switch was made. If this axis right here represents little x and on that particular axis I choose some value little x then if I know that the minimum is larger than x for example if the minimum of x1 and x2 lies to the right of x then it has to be the case that both x1 and x2 lie to the right of x. I could not have said that about the minimum falling to the left of x but I can say that about the minimum falling to the right and that's why I did the 1 minus operation here because I know that the minimum being greater than x is the same as both of them are greater than x. That is x1 is greater than x and x2 is greater than x. Well what next? I have not exploited the fact yet that they are independent random variables and now is a good time to do that. This is 1 minus the probability that x1 is greater than x multiplied by the probability that x2 is greater than x. Now the values that you see here are 1 minus the cumulative distribution function for the random variables x1 and x2 so this can be written as this x1 greater than x e to the minus lambda 1 times x and this quantity right here is 1 minus the CDF of x2 evaluated at x and that is e to the minus lambda 2 times x. Now finally you can have like base here and add exponents so this becomes 1 minus e to the minus lambda 1 plus lambda 2 times x and that is defined on the support x greater than 0 because both exponential random variables are defined on the support x greater than 0. Well that is the cumulative distribution function. If you differentiate that you will get the probability density function of x and that probability density function will be the derivative of 1 is 0 and the derivative here will be lambda 1 
plus lambda 2 multiplied by e to the minus lambda 1 plus lambda 2 times x for x greater than 0. Now if you look at that probability density function for a while, you will realize that the random variable x, which is the minimum of the random variables x1 and x2, you recognize that distribution as the exponential distribution. And it is the exponential distribution with parameter lambda 1 plus lambda 2. And what you have is you have a result that the minimum of two exponentials is again exponential and its rate parameter is the sum of the rate parameters of the individual exponentials. That generalizes to more than just two. If you have n exponential random variables and you look at the minimum of those n exponential random variables, it is also exponential and its rate parameter is the sum of the rates of the individual values. Well, that answers part A. The PDF of the minimum is exponential. The next question is, find the probability that x1 is less than x2. That'll be done on the next page. And so for part B, to find the probability that the random variable x1 is less than x2, begin by drawing a picture. Here is x1 and here is x2 and what part of that first quadrant, that's script A, which is the whole first quadrant, what part of that corresponds to x1 being less than x2? Well here, this 45 degree line is x2 equals x1, so for x2 to be the larger of the two, that is this region up here. And so we want to work a double integral over that region, but what will be the double integral? Two integrals and you will be doing a double integral of the following. The joint PDF of x1 and x2 and we can either go dx2, dx1, it doesn't matter, or dx1, dx2, we'll go with dx2, dx1. So the next step is to set up these limits of integration. Also, what is the joint probability density function, f of x1, x2? Well, since the two random variables were independent, this joint density function will be the product of the marginals. So we will just have lambda 1, e to the minus lambda 1 x1. That is the probability density function of an exponential distribution with parameter lambda 1. And then for x2, the marginal for it will be lambda 2 e to the minus lambda 2 times x2. I forgot a 1 right here. And this will be dx2, dx1. Because dx2 was written first, that means that our integration, the strips for integration here, will be vertically oriented. The lower curve down here at the bottom is x2 equals x1. And the upper curve is basically x2 equals infinity. I'll go ahead and write that. This goes all the way up. x2 equals infinity. And because of that, your limits will go from x1 up to infinity with respect to x2. These strips start here at x1 equals 0 and they go all the way up to infinity. Now for this particular double integral I am just simply going to write dot dot dot. You can do that on your own as an exercise and in the very end you wind up with lambda 1 over lambda 1 plus lambda 2 
is this probability. Now, this will be one of the cases where you will love Apple because Apple on this particular problem works very, very smoothly. And here is the setup. X1 will be an exponential random variable lambda 1, X2 exponential lambda 2. For part A, you want the distribution of the minimum of X1 and X2, so that solves part A. For part B, there is a special way of writing this. I am going to write this probability X1 is less than X2 in the following fashion. pen is misbehaving here. So the probability x1 is less than x2. You can write that as the probability that x1 minus x2 is less than 0. So here is that uh, expression and so basically uh, you take the difference of x1 and x2 that gives you x1 minus x2 and then you find the CDF of that difference evaluated at 0 and so on the uh, the next page here I'm going to do a quick demo of how all this works so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into maple and then I will read in the Apple software and then the next thing I'm going to do is define x1 to be an exponential random variable with parameter lambda 1. Apple has no problem with symbolic parameters. And then x2 will be an exponential random variable with parameter lambda 2. And there is its probability density function. And then when you ask for the minimum of x1 and x2. This is one situation where Apple does very nicely and the, uh, the probability density function PDF for this continuous random variable which has support from 0 to infinity is lambda 1 plus lambda 2 times e to the minus lambda 1 plus lambda 2 times x so that's exactly what we got on the previous slide. Now the last thing to do is to find the CDF of the difference between x1 and x2 and we want that CDF evaluated at 0 and this will give you the probability that x1 is less than x2 it takes a little time to think about it but it comes back with lambda 1 divided by lambda 1 plus lambda 2 those tildes that you see just after the lambda 1 and lambda 2 don't worry about those. Those were put on when the exponential RV function was called up here. That automatically put an assumption on lambda 1 and on lambda 2 that those are positive parameters.